Hello students, today you are going to know a lot of things regarding health and its importance. All must have heard about the proverb, health is wealth. Now I am going to tell you a small story where you can really understand the importance of health. Once there lived two men who had a different taste for life but shared a relationship of friendship. A high paying job embraced Sachin and Ravi had to go as a laborer. Eventually both got married and had children. Sachin loved his family by providing and living a luxurious life. Ravi's love for his family was on through hard work and simple living mechanism. Money led Sachin into a vicious circle of unhealthy habits like improper diet, drug abuse, smoking, luxurious lifestyle, comforts. So earning money was so easy for him that he never exercised much, whereas Ravi had to sweat out every day to earn meager income. His income enabled a balanced diet for him and his family. Just like that, both of them crossed paths one day. They were glad to see each other. They talked and laughed at length when they remembered their childhood memories and their lives so far. Yet one truth left both of them on a sad note. The truth was Sachin had a kidney failure and his chances of living were minimal which was a result of his unhealthy lifestyle. His money could not buy a kidney donor. A certain realization set in Sachin's mind and he talked himself. He asked himself, why did I fall ill? And his life flashed before him. His wealth could not save his health. Eventually, his fortune consumed him. So students, you must have learned how health is important for your life. Only if you have a very good income, that doesn't mean you lead a very comfortable life. Well, comfort does not mean you leave the other aspects of life. You have to take care of your health, individual health as well as public health. So let's move to today's chapter that is, why do we fall ill? So here in this chapter, you'll be going to learn number of things like you'll remember the names of different disease causing agents and you'll be able to differentiate acute and chronic diseases, understand the importance of community health, you'll be able to analyze the various causes of a disease. Also, you can evaluate the mode of action of antibiotics and also you can justify that it is very difficult to make antiviral drugs than antibacterial drugs. So, let's move to the chapter. Health and disease, you know, they are the two parts or the two sides of a coin. And first, you know, cell is the unit of life. It is a dynamic place where different metabolic activities are interconnected. The function of heart, lungs, kidney, etc. are coordinated. And the for metabolic activities, you need energy. Who is providing the energy? It is food that you take. So it is essential that you should take proper food for proper functioning of your cells and tissues. So how could uh, we define health or what is the meaning of health? According to World Health Organization, Health is a state of being well on enough to function well physically, mentally and socially. That means health is not simply absence of a disease. It means you have to be sound physically, mentally as well as socially. So it covers all the three aspects of health, mental health, social health and your physical health. So good health depends on our efforts and also on the environment to which we are exposed to. Our social environment is an important factor in individual health. We live in villages, towns or cities. Here our physical environment is decided by our social environment. We need to be happy in order to be truly healthy. Good health demands sound mental health that is free from anxiety, fear, stress, depression. And when you say social equality and harmony, then they are also playing significant roles. Physically also, sound health means one should be free from diseases. Individual health includes care at individual le level, 
यू हैव टू टेक केयर ऑफ योर ओन बॉडी सच एज ब्रशिंग योर टिथ रेगुलरली इन द मॉर्निंग एज वेल एज एट नाइट बिफोर गोइंग टू बेड कॉमिंग योर हेयर वॉशिंग क्लोथ्स बैथिंग क्लीनिंग एंड अनदर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एस्पेक्ट इज टाइमली वैक्सीनेशन सो एलोंग विथ इंडिविजुअल हेल्थ दैर इज ऑल्सो कम्युनिटी हेल्थ और पब्लिक हेल्थ सो इट इंक्लूड्स कलेक्शन एंड डिस्पोजल ऑफ गार्बेज क्लीनिंग ऑफ ड्रेन्स नॉट अलाउिंग वाटर टू स्टैग्नेट ऑन स्ट्रीट्स एंड ओपन स्पेसिस देर शुड बी प्रोविजन फॉर सप्लाई ऑफ क्लीन ड्रिंकिंग वाटर देन देर शुड बी स्वीपिंग और क्लीनिंग ऑफ रोड्स बाय द म्यूनिसपैलिटी स्कैवेंजर्स एंड मास इम्यूनाइजेशन प्रोग्राम्स एंड ऑल्सो अवेयरनेस ड्राइव्स सो यू सी पब्लिक हेल्थ एंड इंडिविजुअल हेल्थ बट वॉट टू कंक्लूड पब्लिक हेल्थ इज इम्पोर्टेंट फॉर इंडिविजुअल हेल्थ सो वी कैन ब्रिंग द पब्लिक हेल्थ और द कम्युनिटी हेल्थ बाई एफर्ट्स ऑफ ग्रुप इट इट इज ग्रुप एफर्ट सो इंडिविजुअली वी हैव टू टेक केयर ऑफ आर ओन हेल्थ प्लस एट द सेम टाइम वी हैव टू टेक केयर ऑफ कम्युनिटी हेल्थ बिकॉज इफ योर कम्युनिटी और एनवायरमेंट इज नॉट क्लीन हाउ यू कैन बी क्लीन हाउ यू कैन बी सेफ सो वी हैव टू फॉलो द फाइव एफ्स सो वॉट आर दोज फाइव एफ्स लेट मी टेल यू लेट मी सो यू हियर मिट दिस वन सी द फाइव एफ्स दैट इज फॉर प्रिवेंशन ऑफ ट्रांसमिशन ऑफ डिजीजेस बाय मेंटेनिंग सैनिटेशन एंड हाइजेन द फर्स्ट वन इज फिंगर्स हियर यू हैव टू वॉश योर फिंगर्स बिफोर ईटिंग फूड बिफोर प्रिपेरिंग फूड एंड ऑल्सो आफ्टर डिफिकेशन देन द नेक्स्ट वन इज फील्ड so from the field we are getting fruits vegetables etc and all those should be properly washed before putting it for cooking and then the third if all of you see flies so your food should be properly covered and you should control the entry of flies otherwise you will be infected then the number 4f is food so here all the food items which you are using that has to be cleaned properly before consuming it and the last one is fluid so here fluid means proper proper drainage system that means your drains should be cleaned at intervals and and it should be properly uh, maintained time to time so that the other so that the infecting agents will not cause any pollution so these are the five f's which you have to maintain in order to prevent the transmission of diseases for by sanitation and hygiene so students it is very important for you and for every person that you have to follow this in your life daily life now you should know the distinction or the difference between healthy and disease free simply not being diseased is not the same as being healthy good health for a dancer means to be able to stretch body into different but graceful postures it differs for a singer actor for a sports person for a labor for a office going person there are different meanings of good health for these persons right so health can be used in a broad sense like society community whereas when you are using the term disease it is linked to particular individuals or individual sufferers now we'll study about the causes of different diseases okay so how do we know that there is something wrong in the body what it you see there are some symptoms what are symptoms they are the things which we feel as being wrong means something we feel uncomfortable uh, something that deviates from the normal right so that can be called as symptom for example headache uh, stomach pain loose motion or wound with pus these are all symptoms so symptoms definitely they indicate that there ma might be some disease but they don't indicate what the disease is so next is when you go to a doctor or a physician he will be asking you the symptoms and then the doctor or the physician he will search from the symptoms or the on the basis of symptoms the doctor will look for the signs of a disease okay signs s i g n s signs of a disease so 
those signs of a disease definitely will give a little more definite indication of the presence of a particular disease. After that, the physician may advise for lab tests or diagnostic tests to pinpoint the disease further. So, now we can divide the diseases broadly into different categories. First category is on the basis of the time period for which it lasts. So, we can divide it the group uh, two groups one is acute diseases and the second one is chronic diseases. So, all of you know acute diseases means these diseases they last for a short period of time and we get recovery from the disease and it has no major impact means negative effect on our body right. But when you talk about chronic diseases they last for a long period of time and they definitely have some effect on our organs and organ systems and they may be even they may even last for your lifetime. Suppose, suppose acute disease viral fever typhoid we get recovery no but uh, acute like uh, filariasis or there is uh, uh, high blood pressure diabetes these are all chronic usually the person suffers throughout the life and he has to take all the precautions you know to get rid of those diseases right. So, we should be very careful about the non-occurrence of chronic diseases. Then another category of classification is we can divide into infectious and non-infectious based, based on what? Based on which is the causing agent whether any infecting microbes are involved or not right. So, if infecting microbes are involved then the disease is coming under infectious disease. So, and those diseases which are caused by uh, some genetic defects or by some malnutrition means you are not getting proper vitamins and minerals right or because of the effect of the environment then those are the non-infectious diseases. So, infectious diseases suppose uh, you are having fungal infection, some allergy or uh, skin rashes are there that is an infectious disease, chicken pox that is also infectious. Then non-infectious you can take the example of uh, any malnutrition disease like uh, night blindness then beriberi. Similarly, genetic defects like Down syndrome, Turner syndrome these are all non-infectious diseases. Now, when, uh, when there is a disease we always uh, discuss about what could be the possible cause of a disease this that that we will discuss or not. Suppose, uh, let us take an example of a baby, small baby is uh, having loose motion. So, first thing which comes to our mind is uh, maybe because of unsafe drinking water then the infecting agent is there in the unsafe drinking water. Then the question comes if uh, one baby is suffering why not other babies in the locality why they are not suffering then the question comes that baby is uh, having I think uh, that baby must be having uh, low uh, means resistance less resistance. So, why there is less resistance that means maybe because of malnutrition means not given proper balanced diet ok. Then the third reason may be some weak immune system ok. So, we are having number of causes for that, but if the pathogen is not there the disease simply cannot occur even if there are other causes like the genetic factor or malnutrition right. So, one cause the principal cause is the immediate cause right, but the other factors the other causes are called the contributory causes hence diseases have different causes. First category is immediate causes and the second category is the contributory causes. Now, we will study the different infecting agents or the infectious agents. So, there are different categories virus ok, first virus then bacteria, fungi, protozoa and worms right. Worms you see they are multicellular and they, they multiply a little bit slow rate compared to the, the four groups other four groups of microbes or the infectious agents. So, uh, the different infecting agents we will discuss now. So, let me show you the pictures of the agents, the infectious agents see. So, here one is 
this virus SARS virus which causes SCID severe combined immunodeficiency disease and here you see Leishmania Leishmania donovani this one causes a disease severe disease serious disease that is called Kalazar then so here you see Staphylococcus this is bacteria another disease causing agent so it causes the disease called acne or you are having pimples uh, during adolescence usually pimples come out on your faces so that is caused by this microbe that is Staphylococcus bacteria then here you see trypanosoma this causes sleeping sickness disease and here another one Ascaris lumbricoides this is the ring worm or this is called the round worm the common name is round worm so Ascaris lumbricoides here uh, this is male and male Ascaris and female Ascaris so all of you see the female Ascaris and male Ascaris there is some difference in the male Ascaris the anal part is little bit called so which disease is caused by this one it causes Ascariasis so some examples of viral diseases like common cold influenza dengue AIDS cancer then bacterial diseases like typhoid so when you say typhoid, typhoid uh, is caused by a bacteria called Salmonella typhi. So it is because of intake of contaminated water or contaminated food, cholera, anthrax, tuberculosis, these all of you know are bacterial diseases. So here in the picture you can see the diagram of AIDS virus and that of SARS virus and also Salmonella typhi as well as Staphylococci bacteria. Similarly, certain diseases are called by worms like Giardiasis, Filariasis. Filarial worm is there which causes uh, the disease called Filariasis. Uh, the other name is Elephantiasis. Why it is called Elephantiasis? Because here the lower limbs or the foot or the leg it sw swells just like an elephant giving the appearance of elephant's foot. So, it is called ele elephantiasis. Similarly, fungal diseases like red rashes, allergy, lesions, dandruff, etc. So, you can see the picture of filarial worm and a fungal pathogen causing infection. Similarly, trypanosoma that is a protozoa causing the disease calazar and so another is malaria. It is caused by plasmodium. So, students you know there should be knowledge of different categories of infectious agents why because it is important in deciding the kind of treatment because for every microbe same type of medicine is not given so we should know which is the infecting agent and another thing same drug will not work against a microbe belonging to a different group that means suppose there is a fungal infection and there is a bacterial infection so you cannot take the same medicine or the same drug and you see bacteria and fungi they belong to different groups similarly bacteria and virus they also belong to different groups the same medicine you cannot use for bacterial infection as well as for viral infection so before going to the mode of action of the different drugs we must know what are antibiotics because you know number of diseases severe diseases are also cured by use of antibiotics so the term antibiotics is derived from two words anti plus bias anti means against bias means life against life so against whose life it is against the life of those disease causing pathogens got it now you see how actually antibiotics are prepared now I will be talking about one antibiotic for bacterial infection. Suppose streptomycin, that is the name of the antibiotic. It is used against the bacterial infection caused by which bacteria? Streptococcus. So, here certain things we have to take into consideration. What are those? We have to identify some essential biochemical life processes which is peculiar, means which is unique to that group and not shared with any other groups. These processes may be pathogens and for symptoms for new diseases. So, we have to find a drug that kills bacterial cell wall synthesis pathway means you know 
the cell wall is a essential part required for the survival of the bacteria. Suppose we are making an antibiotic means medicine, we have to try that that antibiotic will inhibit, will stop the formation or synthesis of cell wall of bacteria. Right? So, if the cell wall is not synthesized, how the bacteria will survive? The bacteria will automatically killed. Got it? So, we have to find a drug that kills the bacterial cell wall synthesis pathway. Pathway means mechanism without affecting our own body. So, we have to kill the cell wall of bacteria. Got it? It should not interfere with our body processes or our metabolic activities. So, this is how we have to prepare an antibiotic. But while preparing a antiviral drug, what precaution we have to take? Again, the same way we have to see that that drug will act on the virus and not against our body. But the problem is what? The problem is viruses, they use our DNA, they use our, our biosynthetic machinery for their growth and multiplication. Okay. So, we have to be very cautious for while preparing antiviral drugs. What precaution we can take while making antiviral drugs? We have to choose some specific pathways right, of the virus so that that pathway is unique to the virus and not common to our pathway. Why I am telling so? Because in the beginning I told viruses use our biochemical pathways, our biochemical machinery, our DNA for their metabolic activities. So, we have to choose certain metabolic activities. Viruses have some unique metabolic pathways of their own that we have to choose. And then we have to prepare certain drugs which will act against that specific pathway which is unique to virus and which is not shared with our body. Understood? So, definitely the making of antiviral drugs is difficult compared to the making of antibacterial drugs because bacteria use their own DNA. Okay. So, there is no difficulty in pre preparing antibacterial drugs, but when preparing antiviral drugs it is difficult because we have to choose only those specific pathways which are unique to virus and not shared with us. So, I hope you have understood the mechanism of action of antibiotics and how the antibiotics are prepared. So, by this time already we have covered the different types of diseases, then the infecting agents and uh, how the antibiotics are prepared. So, antibiotics are always, uh, they are prepared from one group of microbe and are used against another group of microbes. So, here suppose penicillium notatum, it is a fungus. Okay. From that fungus penicillin, the antibiotic is prepared, but penicillin will kill bacteria. So, penicillin is an antibiotic which can kill bacteria. So, whatever is taught to you, I hope all have understood. So, let us test ourselves and it is quiz time. The first question, when is a person said to be healthy? So, all of you know the answer. It is a person is said to be healthy when there is physical, mental and social well-being and not merely absence of any disease. Then the next question, which bacteria is responsible for causing the disease typhoid? Yes, the answer is Salmonella typhi because I told you while taking a contaminated food that bacteria may enter into your body and may cause the disease that is typhoid. Which of the following has a long term effect on our health? Chronic disease or acute disease? So, I hope all can answer the question. The answer is obviously chronic disease because it is having long term effect. It may affect our major organs and organ systems. Name the microbe that does not have its own biochemical mechanisms but depends upon that of the host cell. Just now we have discussed. Yes, the answer is virus because it does not has, it is, it is not using its own DNA, it is using our DNA. So, our own biochemical mechanism 
they are using so they are dependent upon our dna or the dna of the host cell which they enter then the last question what are the five apps for preventing transmission of diseases through sanitation and hygiene now it is covid time all of you know every day we are practicing it in our life regarding washing of hands so what are those five apps the answer is fingers number 1 fingers number 2 filled number 3 food number 4 flies number 5 fluids so students i hope all have understood the concepts what i taught today in today's class so i hope that now you are able to enlist the names of different groups of pathogens and also you can you are able to find the difference between acute and chronic diseases and also you must have developed the ability to analyze the various causes of a disease and also you can evaluate the mode of action of antibiotics just now we have discussed how the antibiotics they act in our body in what way we should take precautions while preparing the antibiotics and at the end the most important thing is that you have the ability you have developed the ability to create mind map so that you can so you can represent the classification of pathogens and the type of diseases that mind map also you can create now because you have studied the different classification of pathogens as well as the different types of diseases so that's all for today's class thank you